Thoughts that bind us together. This is um, a lecture for my st staging citizenship students um, by me, Andrew Thomas, uh, at Estoril University College, which I would like you to watch um, before we meet on Thursday, the 11th of February, 2021. So thoughts that bind us together. As teachers, we are involved in um, at least three things. <laughs> probably a few more, but at least three, um, which is to say we're, we're involved with thoughts and knowledge, uh, uh, with, with ideas and, and that kind of thing. We're involved with society. Um, we, we, are, we are one of the most important building blocks of the future society. And we're involved in transformation, changes, uh, whether we like it or not, and for good or ill. Um, our students are different when they come out of our schools than when, when they come into some, uh, our schools. Sometimes we wish they were more different, sometimes we wish they were less. Um, so, but the point is, we need, that, needs to, that means we need to know, we need to understand um, how thoughts and the world and transformation um, uh, relate to each other and, and what things we can transform and what things we can't and what things we want to and what things we don't. So let's talk a few, uh, a few minutes about that, um, relating to um, the book Sapiens by um, Harari. Now Harari asks the question, why did um, the sapiens uh, species survive, whereas um, other um, species in the genus sapiens, uh, homo, uh, like Neanderthals, for example, died out, and they all died out in a particular period um, and a particular stage in the sapiens development. And of course, um, he gives a great number of answers to this and a great uh, deal of depth. Um, and so do read the book rather than just watch this video. But um, but one of the ideas that um, piqued my curiosity was this idea that sapiens were able to relate to um, a much wider um, a variety of people um, outside the family group and the extended family group, uh, which 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 happened by virtue of what we would maybe call proto-institutions, um, ideas, um, habits that we all agree about. Um, and, and by virtue of those, by virtue of the things that we say to each other and, um, and the words um, that, um, that we agree upon, we're able to communicate and, and um, cooperate with a large variety of um, sapiens animals. Um, so, and, and, and of course, this is something that happens um, today, whether that be uh, the institution of money um, or whether it be sheet music that allows us to play music together um, or sing together at the same time, altogether more difficult on Zoom, of course, but, um, but there are apps for that as well, apps as well as music score, um, or whether that be maps, for example, which allow us to agree to meet at a particular place. Um, we, we configure our time and our place together in ways that um, oblige us and commit us and allow commitment and, and predictability. Not only the predictability that says tomorrow's the sun's going to come up, but also the predictability that says if I go to this rock at this time, then Gunil is going to uh, meet me. Um, which uh, which has been uh, which is possible in uh, the animal uh, kingdom um, outside humanity. Um, outside the sapien species. But like I say, within a small group of people, whereas I can communicate, I can, um, I can coordinate um, when I'm meeting with people across the world. So these, these institutions, these um, meanings, um, they usually involve one thing standing for another, this dot standing for a particular place. They determine value, they, uh, they have meanings, and they, and they are able to oblige us. Now, this is a philosophical question about what we are saying, about the meanings of what we say. Um, and, and like I say, um, th they oblige us. Our words, um, our words are agreed on beforehand, before we're even able to think through what words are. Um, and, um, and there has been a, a certain um, stream of philosophy uh, in Europe, postmodern um, philosophy, which talks about the relationship between um, the, the, if you like, the domain of words on the one hand and the domain of um, reality on the other, which has tempted some philosophers to say um, seemingly ludicrous things such as the Gulf War did not take place. And there's lots of different reasons that somebody would say that. But, um, but the one that um, Baudrillard or one of the ones that philosophers would um, very often say is, is the insufficiency of the relationships between our words and our things. Now, if our 
um, if the relationship between words and things is insufficient, we could say that these none of these things are um, are relevant. None of the, it, it isn't true to say that what we understand by the Gulf War is actually what happened in the Gulf War. Um, but it is also true to say that if our um, words are inefficient, then um, that just means that we we need to um, develop other things, uh, and that means that our social um, that our social institutions are not very good for um, for collaborating together. Whereas the ones that actually do work and the ones that we've um, used in order to get to this place of understanding, um, right before we've said that we need to throw it all out the window, they actually are the ones that determine our behavior. Whether we like it or not, it's not possible to just say from now on when I say cat, um, I mean dog. Um, and similarly, I cannot say um, that I, I promised to do something and then say, well, I didn't actually promise. Um, the words that we have and the institutions that we take part in, um, they oblige us. We can't just read words like must we mean and, um, and, and then say that we're reading in our head Hater's gonna hate, 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 hate. No, the words must we mean are there, and that's what that's that's what happens in my head because the words we mean and the words we have, they have primed my head to that purpose. So I can't just say whatever I like. If I want to take part in the um, institutions that I um, want to take part in, if I want to be able to pay my bills, to be faithful to my spouse or the correct spouse, or I want to catch my bus, I need to mean what I say, and I need to understand that particular. Um, institution and take part in that particular institution. Otherwise, I need to stay out of that institution, which is not always possible. Now, we need to know, um, therefore, what kind of things we can push and change and, um, and create in new ways and which, and which we can't. And it's tempting to say that it's the hard sciences that are, um, that are the words that actually mean the most, whereas it's the arts um, and it's the humanities um, which we can push around. But in actual fact, um, it, that doesn't seem to be the case. A lot of the time when you're looking at hard sciences, you need to live with the fact that some things are ambiguous. Um, and a lot of maths, for example, has to start with, okay, let us assume that, let it be, let let X be, and so on and so forth. There are actually institutions which could, um, which which only um, which only work for the purposes of this equation, for example. Whereas um, whereas fields like economy um, are are frustratingly difficult to do something about. Um, Kant talked about how um, the difference between imaginary and um, real. Um, dollar um, in money uh, notes um, does not exist, but it's frustrating um, because imaginary and real ones look the same way. Um, but everyone, everyone knows that if you don't have that, then there is, then you are frustratingly unable to do anything about that fact. On the other hand, um, the amount of money that you have. Um, after um, and, and before and after a, a historical event like a credit crisis um, is frustratingly connected to what people in Wall Street had for breakfast and how they're feeling and how anxious they are that particular day or how much time they've spent on Reddit websites, for example. So um, whilst it looks like they are extremely historical and malleable, we can, we can affect them. Um, ideas such as the institution of the Peugeot company, which is the example that um, Harari gives, or, or, or slogans such as you can always rely on a VW, to give it an, a European context, um, they have really tangible effects in, um, statist in unemployment statistics and in the amount of money you have in your bank account. You can um, say that economy and culture um, determines um, things and so it's it's all very up in the air but you can't go into a shop and say okay I see that the price tag is a hundred but I only think it's worth ten and uh, so I'm only going to give you ten so in other words the classic classic dilemma of um, give me the um, serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is constantly relevant for us. It's extremely difficult to know what we can change and what we can't. And whilst this prayer was made in 1943 by a Christian theologian, um, I have read no religious, philosophical or economic text that actually gives me the final answer of what that difference consists in. So our ideas are what um, make us survive as, as a species, as Harari says, and they what bring us together in this fiction of what we call Estival University College. And it's tempting to say, but because it's a fiction, we can change it. 
But in, in reality, it's those fictions that impose themselves so painfully on our lives, nationality, money, um, institutions and words, they are the ones that also um, are most historically conditioned and least logical. Perhaps at the end of the day, the only thing we can really rely on is gravity.